The ultimate reality is the next young African-American male is dead. Why do you care more about Ahmaud Arbery than you do all the deaths in Chicago Three. on the black on black crime? Because that's, that's a huge statement. Here we go. The truth of the matter is another life is gone. Am I next? This is another question. So we hear the statement that, you know, if you see this and you're white and you're silent, that you're racist, like you're in agreement. If you see this and you're black and you speak and you're angry and you're mad, which you got, again, two, two options. How do you feel when people say that white America should say something? Like they put all white, like you're white, you're a pastor, you're a business owner. You, you, we all looking at the same video, like there's this responsibility that you should speak out or should you not speak out? And then what is the cost of speaking out? Well, yeah, uh, there's a cost. There's a cost. Anytime you take a stand, there's a cost. But for me, I don't feel like I should have to speak out because you want me to speak. I don't want to be reactionary. I want to be proactive. Okay. So I'd rather have, the, like you talked about, the conversation rather than taking a stance. Because gotcha. we don't know all the details. Mm -hmm. like we, we see a glimpse through exactly. a exactly. small lens of what happened. But my thing is I'm going to stand up for truth in love. And so that's, to me, conversation. So will I speak up? Yes. But should I take a stand? I think we've seen many people taking a stand only realize later other facts come out. Right, right, right. And then you lose your voice because even you now, spoke too early. Even now – the footage has come out that he did look inside of a empty house that was in that neighborhood. Yeah. But so he irrelevant. Just, he just took over. But <clears throat> even if he had grabbed something out of the house, let's just make it what it, let's say he did steal something, even though we hadn't yeah. seen it. Do that give them the right to kill us on the street? Them. And the yeah. answer is no, no, number one. And number two, what he did regardless of what color he is. My wife and I did that. Uh, I can't tell you how many times when we were getting ready to build a house. Yes, yep. we just say, hey, there's a house going up. Let's just to go get Look some ideas. Full plan and, yep. If it's, I mean, we we do it all the time. Wow. And and so, and that's what we, she and I talked about that yesterday. And she's like, you know, now, if we were black, we would have to be concerned about that. We didn't think anything about it. Like, hey, let's go look at the plan. And we, I mean, we didn't, wow, we didn't, I never thought we didn't think that. we yeah. were trespassing or that we were like, and if somebody would have come up, we'd have said, hey, this is a nice house. Show us this. Yeah. <laughs> or say, hey, how do, wow. how, what gave wow. you that? I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't give it a second thought. We never considered it trespassing, and I sure wouldn't want to get shot over it. Yeah. Good grief, yeah. so man. My question would be, a follow what does taking a stand do? Well, that's, that's one of the things we have to deal with. You're talking about 2020. So when you talk about taking a stand, we go back to Dr. King. Oh, mm -hmm. we're going to have a march. Oh, we're gonna have a protest, and here come you know, you know you here come Al Sharp, here come Jeff. <laughs> All right, we got another case right now, and we're you know, yeah, yeah. and then on the other end here you got Sean Hannity, you got Rush. I mean, let's just call it what it is. Yeah. And so everybody's, and no one's really having a dialogue. Absolutely not. And even when you become confrontational, even you could be communicating but still not connecting. So I could be communicating how I feel but still not making a connection because I'm still talking from my point of view, understand me, listen to me, and never always, God, man, I wonder if I, I hope I do, if I don't, I mean, I'm on the set, we live on the set, on. I got it, I got to do it, I'm sorry, <laughs> we don't live on the set, Brother James, I always say this, oh yeah, this is awesome, if we, if we, me and Scott did this one night, and I'm like, what do you see, heads, heads. and I see tails, yep. it's no way you see heads, Yes, I do. No, you don't see heads, man. Yes. It's tails, man. No, it's definitely heads. No, it's definitely tails, no, man. No, there's no way. You're blind. You're blind. No, see, I that's see what right I there. Say, that's what I say about people oh, like you, man. <laughs> people like you, you don't see the tails, man. I don't trust anybody carries quarters anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, the kicker is we're looking at the exact same quarter, right? We can agree there's 25 cents, but we're just looking at it from two different angles. Right. And sometimes that's what's – I never take the time to look, oh, man, that is here. <laughs> or you look and say, oh, man, it is tails. We just continue to go back and forth based on what we see. 
and never start the dialogue to look on the other side. So when you say, what does taking a stand look like? I think this is taking a stand. Yeah, I would say I think conversations are better than a stand. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I think what sure. you guys talked about earlier, like he is posting something on Facebook, taking your stand, posting the picture, doesn't help. It runs through the, the timeline of Facebook for one day. Right. But having a conversation with five or six of your friends or five or six of your friends right. does much more long term than anything else. And like for us, I want to overcome with love. Okay. So, Go like, ahead. so my wife is black, kids are mixed. We are at a Mexican restaurant. It's probably right after the Ferguson thing. We're in a Mexican restaurant, and my wife said, hey, that's so-and-so's brother. Like, he's extremely racist. Won't come to chapel because he's racist, et cetera. So at first, I was like, and he thinks my kids are less than, than his kids. So I'm thinking through, and God said, no, no, no. He said, racism comes from, a, from an inferiority. Well, you don't feel good enough, so you try to f- overcompensate with superiority mm-hmm. to elevate yourself mm-hmm. over somebody else. Right. So, like, if, if you don't feel inferior, racism doesn't hurt you. Doesn't so now when people use the N-word around me with my kids, it doesn't bother me. Like, that's their opinion. It's wrong. I realize it's out of weakness, not strength. So I was like, man, what should I do? Like, I wanted to say something at first, and God said, just pay for his meal. So mm-hmm. we're about to pay for our meal, pay for his, his whole family's meal. We get up and leave. And so I was like, you pay for his meal? I said, yeah. So we leave. And so he obviously recognized this. He had texted his sister, and he's like, did, did they pay for my meal? And so what I didn't realize was he's on disability, so he views his stake in life Uh is because there's black Mm. people taking Mm. his opportunities, et cetera. And so they didn't have the money. They got a check. They hadn't eaten out in months. Went out to eat because they got a little bit of money, and I paid for their meal, (laughs) which is did more than ever taking a stand. It's a small little overcoming with with love rather than trying to take a stand all the time for us. Can can I I say this? I'm I'm in total agreement about – the stance and the conversation. The truth of the matter is, we have conversations. We don't take a stance. Nobody is not going to just be honest. But in the next two weeks, nine times out of ten, this situation just dwindles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sixty days later, another video pops up with a fresh murder. Right. However, it, whether it's from protesters come out, whether it's from police, or whether it's from a citizen trying to protect the neighborhood, the ultimate reality is the next young African American male is dead. Mm-hmm. We trying to figure out if we gonna take a stance. We trying to figure out if we gonna have a conversation. But the truth of the matter is, another life is gone. Yeah. And here come the scariest part. Here come the scariest mm-hmm. part about it all. When this life is gone, as an African-American man, I don't know if I'm gonna see justice. I don't know if the police or if the citizen is gonna be, is gonna even be indicted by the grand jury. So the reason why when I walk out of my house every single day, I'm asking the question, am I gonna be the next hashtag? It is simply because we can't figure out if is it, are we gonna take a stance or are we gonna have a conversation? But the goal is, the goal is, mm-hmm. let's stop the Afri- the deaths of young African American men. We can we can lay we can we can be in the middle of a hot coal. If we continue to do mm-hmm. this, we will continue to see. I'm lukewarm. I don't know. And you're absolutely right. Your your platform, who you are, to hold on. Yeah, you better believe you got to think it through. Mm-hmm. But something has to be done. What would you suggest? I, I, I would definitely suggest in the church world, right? Mm-hmm. Because this is the world I'm in. I'm, I'm not in the okay. entertainment, okay. this, that, and other. Okay. Right. right off the top, in the church world, I am one. I, I, what I personally believe should start something. I believe that every African, I mean, um, Caucasian pastor should stand up and they should start talking openly more about it, having forms about it. I believe that in their own neighborhoods, they should have some rallies, some conversations, the whole nine yards about saying, this is, this is going entirely too far. Because I promise you all, if something has to be done visibly, because I promise you all, we've been, we've been seeing it. Oh, yeah, we've From been the last two, three yeah, years, yeah. just wait, just hold tight. We don't do nothing. Within the, before the summer is out, according to pattern, 
another video will surface. And, 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 go ahead, go ahead, Let me play ahead. devil's advocate just real quick. This is, yes, the, this is what always comes up. Yes, sir. Why do you care more about Ahmaud Arbery than you do all the deaths in Chicago on Pre a black on black crime? Because that's, that's a huge statement. Here we go. Yep. I'm so glad yep. we're here. We're not just here just because we're here. For me, it has touched home. Here we go. May 3rd, 2000. McVeigh Street, Huntsville, Alabama. My brother is standing outside of his car, and he's trying to fix the car. Two guys just run past him all of a sudden. Two black guys run past him, chasing another white guy. They're chasing a white guy. The white guy running his house. And when he run in his house, the other two white, the two black guys keep on walking down the street south. He goes in, grabs his dad and his brother. His brother and him walks back up to the street. They get a distance and see my brother at a distance, and they say, you jumped on my brother. We about to kill you. So, so, so. They run at him. One got a bat, one got a stick. They run at him. They take off running around the car, chase him around his apartment complex, chase him in the house. When they chase him in the house, his friend is in the house, and his girlfriend and kids in the house. When they chase him in the house, they like, what's going on? He's like, man, they didn't chase me in here. They peek out the door. The two sons that chased him in has walked back out towards the uh, parking lot, and the dad is pulling up at this point. The dad is pulling up at this point. The dad pops the trunk. They run to the trunk, start grabbing items out of the trunk. My, my brother's friend comes outside, wave a gun. Hey, man, we don't know what has happened, but y'all need to go on back down the street with it. Okay? No. Y'all jumped on my brother. We about to kill one of you ends. God. They grab a bat, table leg with nails on them. The daddy get out of the car. They coming. My brother with the guy has the gun saying, man, bag up. At this point, my brother say, man, shoot in the air, do something. <laughs> <laughs> no, they coming. He don't do nothing. They get close about to where they standing at. My brother grabbed the gun from him. Pop, 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 bag up, man. Chill out. At this point, they never move. The dad is in the middle. The son is on the left. The other son is on the right. They coming at him. As they are coming at him, he shoots in the air, but then he points. By this point, one is here, one is here, one is here. The dad is humped over, and he's clenching. He's coming at him like this. And the other two brothers are like this. I got to give y'all the visual like this. My brother, my brother is bagging up, saying, man, bag up. They getting extremely close, a baseball bat, table leg with nails. He's already shot in the air. The dad gets as close enough to put his head on the gun. When he put his head on the gun, the other one has got into the motion of a swing. As soon as he gets into the motion of the swing, my brother shoots here, boom, and the gun slings him to this one. Boom, he shoots this one. The other one hit him over the top of the back with the, with the table leg. When he comes back, boom, he hit him. He shoots three white guys. On his doorstep, May 3rd, 2000. Instantly, I get a phone call. I'm in my other life. I'm crazy yeah. the whole nine yards. <laughs> I get a phone call. Your brother didn't kill three white boys. Blah, 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 blah. I, he called me that night. I'm like, man, please turn yourself in. Turn yourself in. We've been using some words, due process. Yeah. Man, I can't turn myself in. I didn't kill three white boys in, in Alabama. I can't turn myself in. I'm like, bro, you got to. He run, make a long story short. They catch him in October 6, 2000, 2000, October 6. They extradite him back. He makes it back to Huntsville in December. March 2nd, 2001, grand jury, they sends the case to the grand jury, sends back the indictment. We purchase him a lawyer. March 9th, immediately Judge Battles tells the lawyer, this case will be out of my courtroom in the next 90 days. June 11th, 2000, they force him to go to trial. In capital murder cases like this, 
They charged him with capital murder. They charged him with triple capital murder. Yeah. In capital murder cases like this, it usually take five, six, seven, eight, nine years to go to trial. Mm -hmm. This case went to trial in 90 days. Of course, all white jury, two blacks, 10, 10, 10, 10 white jury, 10 whites, five males, five females, two blacks. The black lady on the jury is a principal of a private school, all white. The other one is a librarian at a school. Hmm. The case goes into deliberation that morning, Friday morning, 10.30 a.m. They tell them, we will definitely need to convey over the weekend and come back Monday. No, you won't. You're going to bring back a verdict. You, we will put you in a hotel. You will not move. You're going to bring a verdict back ASAP. Well, 9.30 that night, they comes back with the verdict. It wasn't manslaughter. It wasn't murder. It was triple capital murder. Wow. Guilty. 38 witnesses. 20 on one side. 18 on another side. 38 different stories. Five stories were. <laughs> five stories were. Seriously now. Five stories were. He shot him, stood over him, and shot him execution style. 15, 16 times. Shot this one five or six. Autopsies come on and say each person was shot one time. Mm -hmm. They find him guilty. The mom stands up and says it's been too much killing. They wanted to give him the death penalty. It's been too much killing. And now we just want him to have life without parole. 20 years later, like you say, mm -hmm. I'm coming from another place. Yeah, yeah no, so, 20 so, years. so 20 years later, 20, 20 years later, all of a sudden, in the last five years, we just noticing, like Will Smith say, it ain't just start happening. We just start filming. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, mm -hmm. so I, I totally agree wow. on the justice justice so, side. So, 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 at, so at this point, I'm saying we're worried about, and Amar Aubrey and his mom, his his parents are worried about this. Are they even going? Because it's it's taking too much for even to even get shot for him to get picked up. They're worried about if a grand jury indictment is going to happen. I'm saying we worried about dying, the next person dying, and if we and if we, something does happen, then the next question is, will justice even be served? But if it's on the opposite side, yeah. based off experience. Yeah, so so your cries for justice. Yeah. So so so, so, so and, and two things. Yeah. Num absolutely. Number one, justice. Number two, all we saying is. If if everybody if they if 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 white America deserves a fair trial, why not black America? No, no, I agree. A but, fair trial? but the rallying cry is, you know, the hashtag thing. Why is there not an outcry for the va for the lives in Chicago? So so what I'm saying for, from the white perspective, is why do you value this life more than all these other black lives? Why are you not rallying for? The, I don't think it's a, so, so. But the difference is the justice. It's a justice linchpin that you're saying. Absolutely right. So helping people, to, if you're going to move them from, say, on the, on the pendulum, to swing the pendulum this way, helping them understand this isn't just an argument for value of life. Absolutely. It's an argument right. for justice. Absolutely. So you have right. to frame that Without a shadow of a doubt. Absolutely. See what I'm saying? Because yeah. most people are looking at it as, as a value of life. You're upset about the loss of a life. Right, yeah. right. That's, so why you are you it. not upset about all these lives lost in, I got in you. Chicago? Right. You need to reframe the conversation to the justice over the loss of a life. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That and and that's a totally different conversation. Yeah, that's a different conversation. And a different, a different platform to speak from. Yeah. Even from black on black crime, the first thing. There's no you're justice thinking, involved. Right. It's like, oh, you know, we. Big in park, they still had, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's all, there's just another life gone. But all of a sudden, when it's someone white who does it, man, we gotta. Yes. So that's what you ask. Yes. Okay. So, so, gotcha. so, so, and, and, and if we, and if we really, and it is. And, it's, it, is and it is justice, what you're saying. Right. It's, it's black on black life. crime happens. White on white crime happens too. Right. Without right, a right. shadow of a doubt. Right, right. You got me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the narrative, it is. White people are killing black people. Yeah. And justice is not being served. Right, right. Black on black, like you, that's a totally different yeah, conversation. That's a whole, that's a whole, especially but in saying, Chicago. I but understand it's all what you're looped saying. in together in right, the conversation. Right, right. And so I'm saying we need to filter out the, the correct piece right. because so that's are one you of the greatest saying, so arguments in the white this. community. So if, 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 let's say someone white is watching us now, you're saying framing the conversation not from Hashtag I run with Ahmad to 
or I run with Maude, whatever it is, to man the justice. Yes. The, why did it take that long? Why but, did if somebody broke in your house and you shot them? So the, the fact justice, of the matter is, which justice, is what you're talking which, about. Which, justice which is, is going to be served though. Watch this, because when black on black crime happen and they got they got all if they get all the evidence, it's going to be a life without parole sentence. Right. It's going to be they going to prison. Black people are going to kill black people and black people going to go to prison for, for behind it. If white people kill black people, we're not seeing nobody go to prison. We're not seeing nothing take place. The right. truth now, of the are matter. You, are you talking about with cops or are you talking with, with both? With, with, yeah. Both. That's, that's what, yeah. Now, my Knicks.